so today I'm going to show you how to make asparagus, strawberry, and mint relish. This is a wonderful relish that to me just really captures the spirit of spring. And the combination of strawberry with asparagus, and then you have a kick of lemon and lemon zest and a little hint of garlic at the end uh, with the mint. It's just this really nice, delightful, bright sauce that I think is applicable to multiple varieties of proteins. Um, I've had it with sea scallops, which I'll show you at the end, you know, what it looks like with a sea scallop. Uh, I think it goes really well with duck. It can go well with uh, chicken, uh, seared chicken breast, or a roasted thigh. Um, or even like a vegetarian uh, dish that's centered around like a mushroom, like an oyster mushroom, uh, or even tofu that matter for that matter that has been like braised or grilled. So it's a really versatile sauce, and it captures I think the essence of spring, and it's also kind of surprising. You know, people tend to think of strawberries as being solely a dessert uh, ingredient, or perhaps they think of like you know strawberry mixed with raspberries and blueberries on a plate or in a sorbet. Um, and so it's nice, in, I think, and surprising to have it in an entree. Um, and to me, that's what's so exciting about cooking, is playing with ingredients that are at the height of their peakness and seeing what you can do with them. So to start with our ingredients, what we have here is uh, we have strawberries that I'm going to roast. And then here we have uh, about eight total, even though the recipe only calls for about six strawberries. I like to cook a few extra because I like to eat them. It's like one of my favorite treats actually, roasted or grilled strawberries. Uh, roasting the strawberries really concentrates the flavor and it brings out the sweetness, but also the acidity and it's kind of like a jam bag in your mouth. So I really uh, enjoy that. So for the recipe though, you only need about six medium sized strawberries. And I like to use organic strawberries and here's why. Conventional, uh, practices with strawberries, they're actually really heavily sprayed. Uh, they used to be sprayed with methyl bromide. I think that's been phased out. And then for a while it was methyl iodine and that's been phased out. Basically all these things are really toxic. They're used at least as fumigants for the soil. Um, and that, you know, helps the strawberry grow, but it's actually really toxic for us. And that's something we want to avoid. So I always go with strawberries that are organic. And really actually, I do try to do that with most food. If I can possibly afford it and find it, organic is the way I go. But for the recipe, six strawberries. And then what I've done is I've tossed them in just a really small little bit of olive oil and then a pinch of sea salt. Um, and what that does is it allows the strawberries to cook without them sticking to the pan. Now what I have them in is a glass dish, a roasting dish. Um, and then I have some asparagus spears. Now these asparagus spears are larger than most. And so uh, in the base recipe that's on my blog, I have you using about 15 strawberry or asparagus spears because uh, generally they're a lot thinner. These are pretty thick, I would say. So if you have thick ones, 10 should be fine for this recipe. And again, I've tossed them in a little olive oil and sea salt. Um, and again, that's to prevent them from sticking and uh, it gives them a kind of a nice uh, sheen as well. Uh, so that's that. Uh, so I'm going to throw these in the oven. My oven has been preheating uh, to 400 now and it's stable at that temperature. So I'm going to go ahead and throw them in the oven uh, and then I'll show you uh, what happens after that. So in the oven they go. I'm putting them on the top rack because I don't mind some caramelization on this. I think it would be really nice. Um, so that's that. Now what I have here is a teaspoon of lemon juice and half a teaspoon of lemon zest, finely grated lemon zest. And it's hanging out. It's just been maybe like five minutes or so that it's been uh, marinating is what I like to call it, or macerating. Um, and then what I'm going to do here is I have a medium clove of garlic in my garlic crusher. And I'm going to basically crush the garlic into the lemon juice and the lemon zest. What that does is it uh, slightly, slightly cooks the garlic and it mellows it out, it takes that sharp edge off of the raw garlic. Uh, which is really important for this recipe. And so I'll go ahead and I'll do that now. Kind of shake it off. Get a little knife and scrape it in there. Swirl it around so the juice and the garlic kind of cook together. And then I'm going to set this aside. And basically as the strawberries and the asparagus spears are roasting away, the lemon juice is going to cook our garlic. 
Um, so I'll get back to you in a few minutes once the asparagus and the raspberry er, and the strawberries are cooked. And uh, in the meantime, I'm going to show you something quite exciting from my garden. So what we have here, we have the strawberries and the asparagus just out of the oven. And so I roasted these at 400 for about 11 to 12 minutes. Uh, now for these, these are you know relatively large strawberries. Again, the asparagus spears are pretty thick. So if they were thinner, I would think roasting it for about eight to nine minutes would be plenty of time. You want to aim it basically for an al dente flavor in or te uh, texture in your asparagus. What I mean by that is it should still have a little bit of a sharpness to it when you bite into it. It should still be firm. You definitely don't want it mushed out. I think people overcook asparagus way too much and you really don't want that. The vibrancy of the flavor really and the, that texture is so important when you're eating asparagus. So you want it to have a little bit of firmness to it. You don't want it so firm that it tastes raw, of course, but you do want a bite to it. I like to think of it as literally al dente to the tooth, right? You feel it on your tooth. Your tooth has to do a little work and face some resistance when you're biting into that asparagus spear. And that's what you want to aim for. And here's why, too. In addition to you don't want soggy, you know, uh, floppy asparagus, nobody likes that. You are mixing your asparagus with an acid, which is the lemon. And then also, you know, has a little bit of that garlic and then the strawberry itself has some acid too. And you really want it to be able to stand up and retain its uh, firmness in the relish. You're also going to chop it up uh, and, bit, well, not really chop it up. You're going to small dice it. And when you small dice something, it's basically going to be more impacted by the acidity, acidity in the relish from the lemon and the strawberry. And so that's the why you really don't want to overcook your asparagus. And you want to aim for al, al dente. Now what I'm going to do is let this stuff cool down to room temperature and then I'll show you how to cut it up. Okay. So welcome. Here we are in uh, the garden where all the magic happens in my opinion. This is like the, the base of every good dish I think happens in the garden or you know in the farm uh, or on the farm I should say. Um, and so here we are. It's uh, April, early April in Northern California and everything is just starting to come to life. We just had a good you know hit of the rain and everything is growing again. Uh, the grapes extending, you know, out its uh, vine. The pepper plants are growing. The herbs are just like flush with new growth. Uh, and so it's so exciting for me to be here in the garden. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to harvest some peppermint for this recipe. Now the base recipe on the blog is with mint. That's easier to find in most grocery stores. Why I'm using peppermint is because I have it growing here and there's nothing better than using something that you're growing. And so what I'm gonna do now is uh, show you uh, as I harvest. Okay, the so here we are looking down at the peppermint plant and I'm gonna harvest the tips. Now you wanna harvest just the new growth, I think, of your uh, mint. And what happens when you harvest these tips here is that basically the stem will begin to divide out and you'll have a bushier plant. Uh, it's quite delicious, this uh, fresh mint from the garden. And all this growth just happened over the last like three or four days. So it doesn't get fresher than that. And you know, I'm gonna pick these tips and then chop them up just really slightly and throw them in the relish. Uh, so this is the way I love to cook, is straight from the garden, when I can. It's not always possible given you know my living circumstances and my schedule, you know, and the time of year and yada, yada, yada. But when you can do something like this, it's always, I think, best. Uh, in terms of the flavor. Um, and so now I have my uh, mint for the recipe. I'm gonna go ahead and go inside. Okay, so welcome back. I'm gonna show you how to now uh, cut up these uh, vegetables, their asparagus, and then your strawberry, the, the berry. Now for this, I have a particular process that I follow that I think works best uh, with these ingredients. And first, the process would be to basically cut up your asparagus. and. Uh, I do all that first because I think that's the most kind of, what is the word, uh, resilient product that we're working with compared to the strawberry. The strawberry is, you know, relatively f fragile, even though it's been uh, cooked, you know, and it has that kind of strength to it. Uh, it's still a little more fragile than the asparagus. Um, so I'll basically show you how I uh, set that up. Okay, so welcome back. And so what I have here, basically, I have my asparagus spears that I've cut in quarters. So I cut them in half and then I basically cut them in quarters uh, from that stage. Uh, and then I set them aside like this. Um, and then basically I take about 
this amount and slice it across this way. Now, depending on the size of your spears, you might be able to get away with just slicing them like this straight up if they're pretty thin, or you might half them and cut them. The basic thing is you want small dice at the end. So you want to aim for something like this uh, when you are basically done cutting it. And so you're gonna have to kind of make your call. Uh, basically asparagus varies greatly in its size. Uh, you know, spears uh, from one farmer are really thick one year and super thin the next. And so you're gonna have to make your adjustments as necessary, but you basically wanna aim for this. So again, what I've done is these are relatively medium to medium large spears. And so I've quartered them and now I'm going across like this in my small dice. Okay, so for your strawberries, you wanna follow this process. I basically cut them in thin strips like this. Hopefully you can see that. I know it's red on red. Maybe that's not the best contrast here. <laughs> Hopefully you can see that. So you basically have thin slices like that. And then I stack them up and dice or slice them this way, right? So basically you have thin strips like that. And then finally I go like that with my knife and create the small dice. Essentially, you want to aim for the small dice. Again, a lot of this uh, setup, you know, with in terms of how you're going to cut your strawberry depends on the size of the strawberry. So if you have a smaller one, like this one right here is pretty small, right? I don't know. Hopefully you can see that. Um, so for this, basically, I'll slice it maybe three ways uh, lengthwise and then cut that into strips and then slice it like this. That's a nice way to small dice. What I try to do is work efficiently. So basically, I'll cut all the strawberries like this. Right, and then cut them all like this, and then go ch -ch -ch with my knife straight through it. It's an efficient way to cut the strawberry. But essentially, again, you want to aim for that small dice that you hopefully can see right here. So for your mint, this is the method I suggest. So for this, I have relatively uh, thin mint leaves, and I want to aim for about a tablespoon chopped up finely. I like to choply, chop it finely. Uh, now, here's the deal. Mint oxidizes if you break it too much and you kind of fracture the cell walls and so i think the best way to slice your herbs like basil cilantro mint the fragile herbs is i like to chiffon on them so basically cut really thin strips you want a super sharp knife thin strips basically this way and then i turn my knife and basically slice it this way so i have you know relatively small squares uh, and that way you're not just macerating and kind of what's the word destroying the cells of the mint leaves you're retaining them uh, again a super sharp knife cut them in thin strips this way and then like this and so you basically have little squares and then what I have here now is I have assembled most of the relish so what you have in here you have the strawberries and the asparagus small dice you have uh, the lemon juice in the zest and the little bit of garlic that have been macerating and cooking for uh, quite a while now in this uh, mixture. I added just a pinch of salt because I needed that. Even though I salted the strawberries and the asparagus, the relish itself needed just a little bit. Um, and then basically a tablespoon of nice olive oil. I like to use when I can, again, you know, organic ingredients. So this is organic and this is unfiltered olive oil. So it has like herbaceous kick to it. So good. You know, a little bit of the olive gunk is in there um, and it's quite delicious. And it's just hanging out now. It's basically gonna marinate uh, for about five minutes. Uh, so the ingredients kind of come together. Not too long, because I don't want my asparagus to turn brown. And so basically you want to mix all this together relatively within like five to eight minutes before you serve it, and that's it. Uh, if you let it sit too long, the asparagus gets brown and it basically oxidizes from the lemon. And then I add the mint literally right before I'm gonna serve it. So right before I serve it, you'll see I'll mix the mint in give it a final taste and then top my sea scallops with this mixture. So I'll be back in a little bit. Okay, so what you have here is we have poached uh, sea scallops. Now these I poached in a flavorful salty broth, uh, basically a court bouillon, for just about two and a half minutes and then pulled them out and let them cool down in a salty water uh, ice bath basically and then pulled them out and dried them off in a paper towel and then here they are on the plate uh, and then i've topped them with the strawberry asparagus and mint relish now again i put them in, in literally right before i served this and then spooned it right over 
and all this basically you want to assemble again right before you're ready to serve it so like the strawberry and the asparagus and the lemon and the lemon zest and the garlic didn't basically touch each other until about four minutes before I plated this and so now you're ready to enjoy this wonderful relish so here we have the tasting this is the best part of cooking is it eating I love to eat that's why I love to cook uh, now for this you can use this relish this base relish with a variety of different proteins as I mentioned in the beginning and it's always fun to exper experiment and try out new things. So I have this uh, same relish with a uh, crispy uh, skin duck breast that I had seared uh, maybe like a week ago. And it, just, it was so great with that because you have the fattiness of the duck and that, that mixed really well with the acidity of the lemon and the strawberry and then kind of the, the nice asparagus, uh, I think it's like an herbaceous green flavor. Really good. So what I like about this sauce is it's robust, it's flavorful, but it's not overpowering. So I can still taste the sea scallop and that wonderful kind of mild, uh, fresh sea flavor. Uh, and then it's mixing with that nice strawberry and the kick of mint, the little suggestion, you know, of garlic the lemon which is nice and bright and then that nice uh, asparagus flavor which to me really communicates spring and so again it's a sauce that doesn't really overpower anything it just kind of accentuates the natural flavor in your protein of choice so enjoy it again have fun cooking experimenting you know tasting things you know one thing that might be fun to play with in the same exact recipe is keep everything the same but add cherry right some fresh uh, cherries that you've roasted in the oven uh, I think big cherries are pretty standard and widely available. Those would be great in this. Maybe if you're into, you know, eating bacon and meat, adding just like a little bit of that would be really nice. Especially, you know, if you wanted to serve a sauce uh, similar to this, a relish similar to this, with like a pork uh, tenderloin or a pork chop. Oh, that'd be so good. So have fun, enjoy, taste widely, and have fun enjoying food because, you know, in life things are difficult. Right now we're fighting this uh, COVIDian virus. And, you know, people aren't able to eat out in restaurants and they're stuck in their homes and, you know, we're washing our hands obsessively, like we should do it anyway, let's be honest. Uh, and people are practicing the social distancing and I think, you know, everyone's feeling kind of a little down and in shock from all this. It's good to go to what is always enjoyable in life. You know, we can still go to the grocery store, hopefully, you know, if we're well enough, we can cook something for ourselves, our loved ones, our family and enjoy it and kind of embrace, you know, what we do have in life is always, I think, a good philosophy to live by, not just during these, you know, odd times, but really throughout your life. So enjoy what you can and always eat lots of good food, right? Because you can't go wrong with that.